Welcome to Math Mini Lessons. I'm Sarah, and today we're going to find out what happens when you add positive and negative numbers, and you'll be able to figure out with certainty if the final answer is positive or negative. So again, at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to model addition problems with counters and number lines. And how do you know you're on the right track? Well, you'll know if you can model a situation well, if you can recognize there's a pattern with adding integers together, and that you are getting the correct answer at the end of the, the addition problem. So with that said, let's jump into today's lesson, Math Marbles. Before we go to our next example, I want to just think of three situations that we're going to be pattern finders. We're going to look for, are there certain patterns that happen when we're adding when we add at positive and negative integers. Does it matter what the combination is and what we also need to get? So we're going to think of three situations, when we add two positives, when we add two negatives, and when we mix them up. So in the first situation, what if I just had just three positives, one, two, three, and I add another two positives, just looking at it, we know that when we put them all together, I'm just getting five yellows, like nothing, there's no zero pairs. So when I add them together, I'm just going to end up with positive five. Makes sense uh, because I'm just ending up with all yellows. There are no zero pairs. So when I think about what happens with four plus three, I think I'm going to, we're going to have the same situation. I'm just going to have four positives. And another three positives, I'm just getting another positive answer. I'm just gonna end up getting positive seven all together. So when I have two positive numbers, I'm just gonna get a more positive answer um, because I, I'm just getting more positives, it's just getting bigger in that way. So what happens if I have two sets of negatives? Does that matter? Well, when I draw it out, it doesn't seem to be any different than the situation with two positives, does it? Like really look at it. Does it look any different? When I add negative three and negative two, I just have a more negative answer. I just end up with negative five. And that makes sense. If I lost $3 and I lost another $2, I, now I've lost $5. Same thing with our second example. If I lose four and I lose another three, I've lost seven altogether. So when we add two negative numbers, even though they're both negative, I end up with just another negative answer. So I'm just adding them all together. Does that make sense? That when I put them together, when I have a sum, I'm just getting more of them. So in one way, I can just keep adding them together. But what happens when they're mixed? Well, when they're mixed, different things can happen. So for example, here's negative three, here's positive two. I'm going to end up with zero pairs. If I put these together, I'm gonna have some zero pairs because these two and these two are going to create zero. I'm gonna be left with one at the end. So I'm just gonna mark that so you can see it. And I'm literally left now with just negative one. So does that mean it's always gonna be negative? Well, let's see. Here's negative three, and here's positive four. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have zero pairs again, that's true. But I'm not, it's not necessarily going to be negative. So I have three here. So I'm gonna have three here. So I know three pairs are gonna go away. And this leaves me with a positive one. So in this case, it really depends. Like even though I'm adding, notice how because of my zero pairs, I'm losing counters. Uh, so just something to think about. And for the sign, well, it really depends. It depends on which integer is greater. Do you have more negatives or more positives? So I want you to think about these patterns as we continue to practice adding integers. Let's start with example one, find the expression of negative four plus 12. Even though I think I can actually draw these with color counters, I think I'd rather do them in real life with counters. So let's switch to a real life model. For this next problem, we're gonna model it with two color counters because I love the visual. Now remember what we talked about when we have a positive and a negative together, they have a net of zero. So this is a zero 
pair and we can see it when we have a negative one and a positive one they come together like magnets and they still make zero so let's just visually show this problem here is my negative four and over here we have positive 12 and just by looking at it we know we're going to have way more yellow so we know our final answer is going to be positive so when i line these up Together, I have four negatives, so I'm going to take four positives. And here are my zero pairs, my net of zero, or my C of zeros. They've canceled each other out, which leaves me with just these eight positive ones. So negative four plus 12, I'm going to have a net of positive eight. Take 30 seconds and jot this down in your notes. I really love this problem. I'm gonna represent it on a number line. Notice I have numbers that have decimals in them, so they're a little bit more complex, and that is okay. So I'm gonna start off with my negative 17 and 6 tenths, and I know I'm adding 9.5, so I know I'm going in this direction. I'm adding 9 and 5 tenths. And I want you to think for a minute, do I have enough for this to go past zero? My actual answer is no. I know that because of what we learned with absolute value. I need 17 and 6 tenths just to make it to zero, so I don't have enough. My answer, my final answer is still going to be a negative number because I don't have enough to get to zero and I don't have enough to get past the zero to make it positive. We know. Um, and I also want us to think for a little bit about what we know we're adding positive and negative integers. We know that we have zero pairs, so they cancel out. So it's very much like subtraction. Even though we're adding, it's very much like subtraction. But this is the first thing I'm going to do math marbles. I'm going to decompose this 9.5 and make it friendlier as 9 and 5 tenths. So what that means is I'm going to make two jumps. My bigger jump, I'm going to add nine, and then I'm going to add five tenths. So we can see where we're going. So in our first jump, I'm going to do negative 17 and six tenths plus nine. I know they're going to cancel out. When they're different, I'm going to find the difference. So 17 and six tenths. And essentially what I mean by that is I'm gonna find the difference, meaning I know they're gonna cancel out, so let's put it in here. Um, and that's going to leave me with eight and six tenths. So I'm gonna put that in here, eight and six tenths, obviously it's still negative, because we have more negatives than positive. Awesome. Now I'm gonna do my next step, which is to add five tenths to eight and six tenths. So again, they're different. There are different signs, a positive and a negative, so I'm going to find the difference. So 8 and 6 tenths, 5 tenths, and that's going to leave me with 8 and 1 tenth. So this is my final answer, 8 and 1 tenth. This makes sense to me because I know it couldn't be a positive number. I didn't have enough to get to past zero. Um, and by decomposing the number, I could actually do it in a way that makes sense in my mind. This is not the way we're going to do it forever, but just so you can start off and think about how you're adding or subtracting these numbers. Take 30 seconds and jot this down in your notes.